Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Satoshi Club. This is your Crypto Sensei speaking and today I'm going to talk to you about what exactly the blockchain is, what are the benefits of a blockchain, how it works and everything basically that you need to know in these short 10 minutes right here. So the Satoshi Club itself is your one-stop shop for all info you know, when it comes to the cryptocurrency world. So if you do enjoy the video, make sure to smash the like, subscribe, hit the bell icon and you know check my previous videos out. But without further ado, let's just get straight into it. By definition, or wait, before I get into it, you know, a lot of you are probably beginners, but even people that are intermediates or, you know, advanced in the crypto world, some of them don't even know what the blockchain actually represents. I mean, I was in the crypto world for around six years before now, and I only learned about blockchain about a year ago because I never really cared about the technology too much. I was only focused tunnel vision on cryptocurrencies themselves, investing, trading services and all this stuff around it. But that's what I'm saying. You know, don't be ashamed for not knowing what the blockchain is. Let's learn it quite quickly. Uh, let me try to explain it properly to you right now. So by definition, a blockchain is a distributed database database or ledger that is shared among nodes of a computer network. So basically, imagine you have a computer network, you have uh, 12 computers or whatever, and they operate in a peer to peer system, which means that they only communicate with one another without the need for a central authority or intermediary or intermediary, right? When a transaction is set forth on the blockchain, all of these or the majority of these nodes or computers have to say, yes, this is valid. This can go through. And then once they say, yes, this is valid. Info goes back to the transaction and the transaction gets let through. It's that simple, right? But let's get a little bit deeper. Blockchain is important for maintaining a secure and decentralized network of transactions, right? The innovation is that it guarantees the fidelity and security of data and also generates trust without the need for a trusted third party. All you need is consensus within the uh, majority of these nodes in a blockchain, right? The blockchain collects info together in groups known as blocks that hold sets of information. When filled, they are closed and they're linked to the previously filled block, forming a chain of data known as the blockchain. Now, you have a block, you have another block, you have another block, it's filled up, new block is created and tied in with the previous one. Pretty simple, right? One of the most important things of this data structure is that it makes an irreversible timeline of data when implemented in a decentralized nature. So it becomes part of the timeline and it cannot get tampered with. Now, how does it actually work? Okay, the goal of blockchain is to allow digital info to be recorded and distributed, but not edited. In this way, it's the foundation for immutable ledgers, which means unchangeable, right? Or records of transactions that cannot be altered, deleted or destroyed, which is why blockchains are also known as distributed ledger technology or DLT. Remember this term, it's pretty interesting. The first proposed uh, you know, blockchain idea was back in 1991, but it only came to the masses in the form of Bitcoin in 2009. Since then, it has expanded into DeFi, NFTs, smart contracts, and a lot more, which is uh, shaping the crypto world as we know it today. Now, this is how it works in a little bit more detail. A new transaction is entered. It is then transmitted to a network of peer-to-peer -peer computers scattered across the world. So this is millions of computers out there, right? This computer network then solves equations to confirm the validity of the transaction. Once it's confirmed to be legitimate, they're clustered together into blocks. Then these blocks are chained together, creating a long history of all the transactions that are permanent and the transaction is complete. So every new transaction is added to a new block, right? Now there can be multiple transactions in a single block, but once it's filled, you're moving on to a new block and it is all untamperable and in chronological order. Now, some attributes of a cryptocurrency itself, and by the way, you should not use cryptocurrency and blockchain as the same term, because they're not. A cryptocurrency cannot work without the blockchain, but a blockchain can work without a cryptocurrency, which is why I believe it's gonna be used as one of the most important technologies in the coming you know, 10, 20, 50 years or whatever, because it's so much more efficient than traditional server rooms, which I'm gonna explain in an example right now. So imagine that a company owns a server farm with 10,000 computers. So it's a server farm. They're maintaining a database holding all of the client's account information. This means that all of this stuff under one roof has full control of everything going on when it comes to this client, right? But what happens if the electricity goes out? What happens if the internet connection is severed? What happens if it burns to the ground? What if a tornado really erases everything, right? The data is lost or corrupted. What a blockchain does to help this out and to solve this problem is it allows the data to be held in a database spread among several network nodes around the entire world, right? 
So if somebody tries to alter a record at one instance of the database on one side of the world, right? Uh, I was getting a call, sorry about that. On one side of the world, they, they won't be able to actually alter it unless the entire other part of the network or the majority of the network says, yes, we can do this, right? So it's very important to note that. And obviously the other nodes are not able to be altered. And, you know, it prevents all of these bad actors from doing significant damage to the blockchain. So if somebody is a bad actor and trying to change something, these nodes will pinpoint the location. They will cross-reference and pinpoint the location exactly of this node with incorrect information, remove it out of the blockchain and continue working as if nothing happened. That's the beauty of the blockchain. Now, transparency is one other key factor when it comes to the blockchain itself. It allows anyone to see transactions occurring live. For example, you can head on over to the Blockchain Explorer. You can type any transaction that you've made before with a string of numbers and letters, and you can check out who sent money to who anonymously, obviously, but from what address, for example, to what other address, what network, to what network and more. So that's pretty cool. You're able to check everything out. And, you know, even though exchanges have been hacked in the past, uh, and a lot of people lost everything. And in this case, the hacker may be entirely anonymous, but the Bitcoin that they extra extracted is not anonymous and it can be found. And this is how regulations are actually finding a lot of lost Bitcoin from the past by simply following the chronological order of the blockchain. Now, is the blockchain secure? Well, yes, it's pretty secure. New blocks are always stored linearly, linearly and chronologically. It is extremely difficult to go back and alter the contents of a block unless a majority of the network has reached a consensus or said yes or made an agreement to do so. It's very difficult to get a whole network to do that, though, because, you know, networks can be huge. Now, let's say that a hacker who also know, runs a node on a blockchain network, another example, wants to alter a blockchain and steal crypto from everyone else. If they were to alter their own single copy, it would no longer align with everybody else's copy. When everybody cross-references what's happening, they pinpoint the hacker and the hacker's version of the chain would be cast away from the network as illegitimate. The probability of succeeding with such a hack would be very small because it requires that the hacker simultaneously controls and alters 51% or more of the copies on the blockchain and also it would take a lot of money and resources. And, you know, next to that, it would not go unnoticed everybody would notice it and then you know it would just not be worth it right because then the network members would hard for hard fork right which means uh basically just moving the blockchain to another uh setup right just upgrading it or, or whatever moving everything to another thing and what happens is this new version of the chain not affected it would be working fine however the attacked version of the chain would plummet in value or of the token itself making the attack completely pointless as the bad actor has control of a worthless asset. Now, the same were to, attack, to happen if the bad actor would to attack a new fork of Bitcoin. They would just fork off once again and nothing would happen. So it's built this way so that taking part in the network is far more economically incentivized than attacking it itself. So I think this is a good start into the blockchain. I will make another episode about this later on. So if you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment down below if you enjoyed it. And lastly, I'm not a financial advisor and you should do your own due diligence before investing into anything in the crypto or NFT or blockchain world. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.